All right, welcome to today's lesson on evaluating and graphing polynomial functions. We're going to take a look at two particular things. One is direct substitution, and the other is something brand new for most people. It is something called synthetic substitution. Direct substitution is just what it sounds like. You plug in the number that you're given for any variable that represents that is represented by the number you have. Synthetic substitution, a couple things about that. One, you're polynomial must be written in standard form. So that means from highest degree to lowest degree. Second thing, you can't miss any of the terms. Sometimes you may have to add zero in as a placeholder, and we'll take a look at that shortly. Let's just do two examples. First one, we're going to have f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x minus 1, and we're being told to evaluate that for f of 2. Some textbooks will write that as f of 2 the way I have written here. Others might write it like this. They might put x equals 2 like that. So that's kind of a textbook thing. Now, direct substitution, no big deal. You'll just plug 2 in anywhere that you see an x. Now the main thing with this is that you take your time and make sure that you write everything down correctly. Now when you evaluate it, again, take your time. Some people can do all of that in their head. Other people might need to go ahead and do one piece at a time. So 2 cubed is 8. So that's that first part. Now I'm going to kind of do that together. 2 times 8, I end up with 16. Some people can go right from 2 times 2 cubed and come up with 16. Others might need to do it one step at a time. Now again, 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to have 3 times 4, which ends up giving me 12. Now this part's pretty straightforward. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 1, so I'll still have plus 10 minus 1. So when you evaluate that and you just find the sum of those numbers, 16 plus 12 plus 10 minus 1, you end up with 37. Now this is exactly how your work should look like if you're showing work for your teacher using direct substitution. Now synthetic substitution is going to look a little bit different. With this, what you're going to do, this f of 2 right here, you're going to put this on the outside, and you're going to make this upside down division symbol. Now what you're going to do next is you're going to take every single one of the coefficients that you have from the 2x cubed all the way down to your constant of negative 1. Now we've got a 2, a 3, a 5, and a negative 1. So you take each one of those cons or each one of those coefficients and you just write them there like that. Now first thing that you're going to do is bring down that very first number and write that there. The second thing you're going to do is multiply 2 by 2, which gives you 4. Now third step, add them up. 3 plus 4, I get 7. No big deal. Next thing I'm going to do is multiply 2 times 7 and I'm going to put that result here, 14. Add them up, 514, I get 19. No big deal. Again, multiply 2 times 19, that's 38. Put your result there. Add them up, negative 1 plus 38, you get 37. So this answer right here, 37, is the same answer that we got when we used direct substitution in the previous example. Either way you'll do it, you will end up with the same value. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was wild the first time I saw it. I was like, whoa, that's a lot easier. If I'm looking at direct substitution, there's a lot of places I can make a mistake. Same thing in synthetic substitution. Both of these require you to just take your time and do your addition, subtraction, and multiplication correctly. Now let's go ahead and practice one more, and then we'll call it a day. Now, for direct substitution, this time we're plugging in negative 3 anywhere there's an x. So f of negative 3 is going to give me 2 times negative 3 squared minus 5. Well, that's pretty straightforward stuff. Negative 3 squared, this is where you have to be careful. Common error right here. People will put negative 9, and it's not. It's positive 9. Now, taking our time writing everything down because that's what good math students do. You take your time and you show your reasoning and you show all your steps. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 5 and then f of negative 3 ends up giving us a value of 13. So that's what we get when we use direct substitution. Now we're going to do synthetic substitution right next to it and see how different that looks. Now again we're going to put negative 3 on the outside, draw our upside down division. We start off with 2x squared. 
So I've got a 2x squared, but I don't have any x terms, so I have plus 0x. So this is where we have to add in that term. And then my last term, my constant, I've got a 5. So this is where the common mistake is. People will forget to add in that linear term. So make sure when you write your numbers in this spot, you'll have 2, a 0, and then a negative 5. You've got to do it this way, because if you don't, then it will not work. So first thing, bring down the 2. Negative 3 times 2, I get negative 6. Add them up, 0 times negative 6, I get negative 6. And again, I multiply negative 3 times negative 6. That gives me positive 18. Add them up, and I get 13. Hey, look, pretty cool. Same example, same result, no problem. Now, what if we did that mistake? Say we ended up just writing it like this. We did negative 3, and we end up with just 2, and then negative 5. Watch what happens. 3 times, we'll bring down the 2 first. Negative 3 times 2, I get 6. Negative 6, negative 5 plus negative 6, I get negative 11. So this is not the way to do that problem. All right? Don't make that mistake. That's the common mistake people will make. So this way is incorrect. Make sure you add the 0 as a placeholder anytime you're missing a term in your polynomial. So that's it for this lesson on direct substitution and synthetic substitution. Pretty straightforward stuff. Again, just take your time when you're adding, subtracting, and multiplying. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.